The daguerreotype process was invented in 1839 in Paris by Louis-Jacques Mandé Daguerre. The patent was immediately released to the public for free, which initiated an outpouring of enthusiasm in both would-be photographers and interested sitters. Capable of capturing images with incredible clarity, daguerreotypes were used for multiple purposes, including medical, scientific, and topographic documentation, but found their most common use in portrait studios. The reflective surface of a daguerreotype acts as a mirror and can also appear as a positive image, a negative, or may not be visible at all depending on the angle at which it is viewed. Library and Archives Canada's collection contains over 250 daguerreotypes and features some fantastic examples of this process ranging from the late 1840s to the late 1860s, in addition to several contemporary pieces and ranging in size from tiny lockets to larger half plates. Finely polished silver-plated daguerreotype images are unparalleled in detail and fragility. These vulnerable items are plagued by the formation of disfiguring corrosion and other deterioration, caused by poor handling and exposure to inadequate environments. To minimize exposure to air, daguerreotypes must be sealed within protective glass cases. Daguerreotypes must also be stored in a cool, dry and constant environment, and light exposure must be limited to prevent further damage. In preparation for exhibition, 15 rare daguerreotypes from Library and Archives Canada's collection were stabilized and treated. When produced, a delicate photographic plate was put under glass and separated by a protective mat spacer often made of brass. It was then sealed around the edges with paper tape to be airtight and often covered with a brass foil called a preserver. This entire package was placed in a small, often decorative case made of leather and wood, papier mâché, or molded plastic with interior linings made of silk or velvet. To prepare the daguerreotypes for exhibition, Library and Archives Canada conservators first disassembled the daguerreotype package, closely examined each piece, and analyzed deterioration on the glass, brass mats, and photographic plates. Photomicrographs, or photographs taken through a microscope, allowed conservators to closely assess the images. In addition to revealing deterioration, these magnified images also record hallmarks or stamps that identify the plate manufacturer or photographic supply house and hold extremely useful information. A number, such as the 40 shown on this plate, refers to the amount of silver to copper present in the daguerreotype plate. Plates with this particular hallmark were one of the most widely used French plates available in the 1850s. Conservators also looked for evidence of previous treatments. Restoration processes are continually revised, improved, and even abandoned. In the 1950s, a cleaning process using solvents, called a thiourea solution, was thought to be a safe and effective way to clean daguerreotypes. Years later, it was discovered that this method left permanent brown spots called measles, and thiourea cleaning was discontinued. Today, conservators prefer non-invasive treatments of daguerreotypes and focus primarily on stabilizing them. One way to help stabilize a daguerreotype is to replace the cover glass. Glass made in the 19th century is unstable and inevitably deteriorates. The glass is said to weep or corrode over time. The original glass is replaced with a special glass that is chemically and physically stable. The photographic plate can also develop mold on its surface. Mold spores can be carefully removed using a very fine brush and an air blower. While mold can be safely cleaned on some daguerreotypes, those with applied color cannot, as it would result in pigment loss. Many daguerreotypes were minimally tinted, highlighting areas such as cheeks, lips, and jewelry, while some were elaborately colored. The primary form of deterioration of daguerreotypes is surface tarnish. Properly sealed daguerreotypes have lasted intact for over a century. However, if the seal is broken, or if the materials sealed inside contain sulfur, the plate will tarnish much like silver tableware. Once all the layers surrounding the daguerreotype plate have been treated, then the daguerreotype package can be carefully reassembled. With new sealed packages, proper exhibition and storage conditions, and close monitoring by conservators, these exquisite early photographic images will be preserved for generations to come.